I'm Commander Shepard, and the average gamer is my favorite site on the Citadel. Welcome to the Average Gamer's second weekly news show. I'm Debbie Timmins. I'm Nick Silverside. And I'm Sean Labode. This week we'll be talking about MCM Expo, we'll be talking about Mark Mir and Curiosity. Sean, you were at MCM last week, can you tell us what that is? Well, MCM Expo, if you haven't been yourself, is a great way to get in contact with other cosplayers, um, sci-fi fans, comic book um, junkies, as I would say, and uh, video games that will be coming out soon that you can kind of preview and get hands-on experience with. Um, yeah, it was great. I got to try play the new uh, Deadpool game, which is coming out sometime this month, um, which is pretty cool because I love the character, as well as um, the new Project X Zone, which is coming out on a 3DS um, in the near future. What is Deadpool? Is it like an action adventure platform? Yes, it, I mean it was. It's not nothing unique, but as a fan, um, Nolan North is doing the voiceover, which I love. Um, he does a great. Deadpool, and it's a it's a story about just an average kind of adventure he's having, but it's got a lot of gore in it, so it's not for kids. Um, there's loads of swords, loads of shooting. Um, it's pretty pick up and play. It's very accessible, but um, yeah, if you love the character of Deadpool, um, you know he's outside of the fourth. He plays outside of the fourth floor, so it's all about him talking to us as an actual player. Um, um, is he DC? Is he Marvel? So he's, yeah, so he's Marvel and he's um, he breaks the fourth wall a lot, which is what is unique about him, which is great because he's basically be challenging us as a player. He, I think during the does he do anything else? Because you said he breaks the fourth wall. Like he breaks times. the wall, but that's that's the greatest thing about him. No other character. That's Just what he does. He he talks to us. I mean, during the hands on, um, he was talking about the achievements that he was unlocking. I was like, this is pretty cool. I've never seen it in a video game before. And yeah, it's it's a lot. It's from the the demo from the start to the end. I haven't had any games that's made me laugh throughout, and that's what this great selling point would be, and for me personally anyway. So I loved it. Awesome. How about Project? What is it? Project X Zone. Project X Zone. Um, so that's a well, it's a take on a fighting game, but with an RPG twist within it. So you've got characters like Ryu and Ken. Um, there's a few others in there. I can't really list all of them. I only had five minutes hands on with it. But you had it's basically two characters versus whatever enemy it was. You choose how many blocks you're going to be moving, and then you choose what moves you want to do. So you'll see them signature moves from Street Fighter within the game, but in an RPG kind of turn-based chess-like turn-based fight. fighter, turn-based fighting, which I can't really say I've seen before. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that's going to be hopefully its greatest selling point because it's unique. And so is that kind of like Final Fantasy combat, where you have a little ticker and then you queue up your moves? Yes. I mean, different hands-on preview we had with it. There was a there's a few characters we've got to play with. Um, you move towards your enemy like kind of chess style, and then you choose what moves you're going to do, and then you go into a lovely cutscene where you get to see the actual move kind of animated. Is it like battle chess? Yes. Battle chess was <gasps> an ancient game, like an old, old, really old PC game. Did you play it? I did. I can't. Yeah. It was it was. It was old, basically really chess. Old. I mean, it was chess, but you move your pieces. And then, like, the queen would get up and she was like some kind of monster. She would take an axe to your head or something. It was ridiculous. Is that like the game that was on the Millennium Falcon in Star Wars? Yes, yes. Yeah. That's a very good example. The pyramid thing or whatever. Does anyone know what it was? No, because yeah, Chewie was playing it and they were fighting yeah. an anime and they were just like, and then they'd attack each other and it was great. I was like, I want to play that game. Somebody should make that game. This could be it. Okay. Oh, cool. With Ken and Ryu. Yes. <laughs> Ryu. Yeah. Uh, you talked to Mike Mir as well, didn't you? Yes, so for anyone that knows, Mark Mir um, is mostly known as Commander Shepard in the Mass Effect series. Um, male Commander, male, male, Commander, male Commander, Shepard. Commander Shepard. Shepard, so not to be confused with the Femme Shep. Which normal Shep. Normal Shep. Proper Shep. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. <laughs> so yeah, Mark, Mark's a cool guy. He was, he's actually a very hardcore gamer. He was listening to a few games that he enjoyed playing, such as Skyrim, his love for Oblivion, um, Elder Scrolls, he plays Mass Effect obviously. Um, I did ask him a few questions about his kind of playthrough, but yeah, I mean, he's he's going to be moving into more TV and web-based series, and so um, he was going to do Tiny Plastic Men series two, as well as um, versus Valerie, which is another show, uh, <laughs> which is really cool. And he's also doing the Baldur's Gate two um, remake, which if you have ever played Baldur's Gate, it was it's quite a classic. I mean, one of my first RPGs I played on the. PS2, I think it was on as well. Really? Yeah, Baldur's Gate 2, Dark Alliance. Was, yeah, 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 no, it's PS2. Dark Alliance is so not Baldur's Gate. <laughs> this is my only the experience only of Baldur's Gate. Are... It was, we'll, we'll be having another show where Debbie argues about Dark Alliance not being a Baldur's Gate game. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 
yeah, no, um, yeah, Mark, man, is a cool guy. Okay, here's the interview. My name is Mark Muir. I play the male version of Commander Shepard in the Mass Effect trilogy, along with a variety of aliens, including all of the Vorcha, all of the Hanar, and many Volus, plus a few random Quarians and whatnot. Most fans have been asking, what's your favorite Mass Effect moment in all three titles, including the DLC? Well, Citadel is probably, it's so jam-packed with favorite moments, like there's dozens of favorite moments in Citadel. It's so loaded with fan service and uh, in-jokes and just uh, emotional closure with the characters uh, and it was a really, really great way to go out. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Citadel is probably my favorite DLC. Lair of the Shadow Broker was another one. As far as moments in the main games, uh, I think the the death scene with Anderson was one of my favorite scenes with uh, with Keith David. That was uh, that was really uh, a powerful scene and uh, quite emotional to do. What's your favorite line out of all three? Well, I usually pick Shepard's catchphrase, I should go, uh, just because I say it so many times. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I also had such a weakness for the renegade interrupts, even when I was playing as a paragon. It was hard not to resist, you know, throwing someone out of a window or punching a reporter in the face. Not that I'm going to punch any reporters in the face. But, uh, favorite weapon, favorite way of killing an enemy, and favorite planet? Favorite weapon? Well, actually, I actually own a replica Avenger. Wow. Yes, and, and since then I've, I've uh, been given you know by fans and, and people who make props. Uh, I've got a Carnifex now, and I've got an Eagle and a Crusader, uh, a Vorcha uh, Blood Pack Punisher submachine gun. But the Avenger was the first one, and it's kind of the iconic weapon as well. So I'll, I'll pick that. Uh, so it was favorite weapon. What else? Favorite weapon. Favorite way of killing an enemy. Favorite way of throwing them out a window. <laughs> and uh, favorite world. Uh, you know, my Renegade Shepherd especially, we had a very close bond with the Krogan. So I'm going to say Tachanka. The other big thing that happened this weekend was curiosity. Someone finally got to the centre of the queue, but that was Brian Henderson, who from Edinburgh, who installed the game like an hour before he won. The bastard. So he was like the genius. We were all there poking these cubes, trying to get to the centre, and he just went, "Now nah, I'll just leave it right to the end." Yeah, we I'm there like every day since then. Well, not every day since then, because I got bored. But <laughs> like every few weeks or something, I'd be there late at night. Oh, there's a tablet. I'm gonna tap away. I think what's yeah, sad is that people, people paint. paint. For tools on that. Mm. I know that was weird, and people were paying to put cubes on because they're knob ends. Yeah. I John disapproves. You're like, I, I've forgot that you could actually buy to put cubes back, and that's actually. People did. I, well, why? Yeah, they did. Why? Because they're mean. Hello, internet. Well, curiosity it was cool for putting your name in it, I guess. I mean, writing whatever tags yeah. you had, yeah, and then we've all forgot about the inevitable prize. Well, I forgot about it anyway. You, you, the person who had reached the center, will be the god of all people that are playing goddess. You will decide, intrinsically decide on the rules that the game is played by. Brian gets to be a god in the new game that 22 Cans is making, which is called Goddess. Now that doesn't mean he gets to design a whole set of rules or anything. What they do is... 22 cans give him a menu and he can choose from a bunch of rules to what to implement, so... You have followers somewhere in Goddess. You can, he can choose to say, like, okay, followers get a day off. And yes, they're less productive, but they also get to be happier. Or he... what it says is... Uh, let me find the quote. What Peter Molyneux said was, Brian can choose a few moral things that are right in the world. Which could be really interesting. I mean, he could decide, I don't know, I'm only spitballing here, but like, have sex with five people every day. <laughs> that's, prob that's probably not what they're doing. Wow. But if he gets to choose, like, you know, killing a cow with an axe is morally right in this world. So he can that really could be interesting. make the moral choices that we won't think is normal, and he can turn on his head, basically. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But, I mean, the other really interesting thing is he does get a cut of the royalties for the amount of time that he's the god. So it's in his best interest to do interesting things and not just grief other players and go, ha ha ha, your game's terrible now. We don't know how much royalty, we don't know how many royalties he's going to get. I mean, that's something that Peter said they need to discuss with him, so yeah. Okay, I don't know, it was royalties. I thought he basically had a share or something and let's just say the company fell through or the game did really badly, they would have, I don't know, worst case scenario, taking money away from him. 
I mean, that would have been... That would be a terrible problem. That would be, yeah. Well, that also... <laughs> well, I thought <laughs> having Peter Mullen in a video talking to you directly was pretty cool in the centre. And then he shared it. Yeah, and and he, he shared it. it. Yeah. Which was nice, because he didn't have to. He could have just said, no, nope, I'm going to keep it secret. And then have the rest of the gaming press go, But if he kept it secret, would we have found out his name and location? Because we, a lot of people have, you know, hunted him down and yeah. wanted to find out. Next-gen prices are a big thing that people have been talking about, because Amazon have put a listing for the Xbox One on as £599. Xavi have got it for £399. And people are going, oh, console, £600, what the hell? What do you reckon? Well, like the Sega Saturn when it came out was £399. The PS1 was £299. So consoles have typically been quite reasonably expensive prices. Um, it's not going to be £599. It'll be something less than that, as is the game prices as well, because um, uh, Amazon's got um, FIFA 14 as 89.99. Although, as I put on Twitter saying, OK, well, Mario and um, Street Fighter 2 on the snares, that was £65 at launch. And one of my followers said, yeah, now I went to Toys R Us and bought it for £70. So there are expensive games in the past that have come out for consoles, but I think the games will be slightly more expensive than the current gen, because it's, it's been well, well, I mean, yeah, the it's six gen years. Launched and launched it was 60, wasn't it? I think it was 60 for PS3 games, 50 or 55 for yeah. Xbox. Now it's maybe 40. Yeah, and that was six years ago. Prices have decreased in the gen, in, in this cycle, which has been just over six years. So the prices will go back up for the next cycle, of, um, and everything's more expensive now. Yeah. So. The way I see it, if they're taking pre-orders, they can't go, yeah, pre-order it. Uh, 250. Oh, we mean 350. Sorry. Yeah. They, can, they can bring them down without losing goodwill. They can't put them up. There is a big warning on Amazon that said this is a, yeah. the price is, you will pay price the price. Will yeah, the price will change and you'll pay the price, the lowest price that we advertise it for. Yeah. I mean, we'll see when that comes out, won't we? Yeah. So hopefully when we get to E3, which starts next week, um, uh, the week after next, then we'll hopefully we'll find out more about the prices. Yeah, E3. So, uh, we're off to E3, hooray! Yay, yeah, we're going to E3. Sorry. Sorry, Sean. So next week the show will actually be, we'll be recording in LA with Colin, our other video presenter. He's in Scotland, so we never talk to him. Yeah, but he's awesome and he loves me. Does he? I think he loves me. Oh, you, meet. Oh, oh so he said he loves you. No, yeah. Wow. No, that's a revelation. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I guess if anyone's not going to E3 like myself, um, there's going to be several events around London, I guess, if you can't be bothered to stay home and watch them, get with friends and go out and watch it all together. And I mean, there's E2 down at uh, Loading. Loading Bar, yeah, in Soho. Just off Rupert Street. Um, I think there's tickets if you check online anyway, but there'll be streams as well as um, devs would be. They've got devs. De devs. They've devs. got devs coming in to talk mm. about games. They've yeah. got. Uh, it's being run by Keith Stewart, who writes at the Guardian about games and a bunch of. I mean, he writes for the Guardian. He knows developers. He knows people. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. So it's free. It's free to enter during during the day. The evening tickets are priced at six pounds, which you can get from uh, from online. So and that you can watch the live streams. Like on Monday is the press conferences, so you'll have uh, a lot of live streaming the press conferences there. Makes sense. And we'll try and get crash as much as the coverage as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Games that have come out recently: uh, Grid Two, Dig's Nightcrawler. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations are three that come to mind. We actually had Grid 2 at the Gaming Den, which is an event that me and Nick run over in Bethnal Green. Yeah. I mean, Grid 2 was, is a sequel to the, the Grid game, which came out in 2008, so it's a lot more of an arcade racer. It's not quite as serious as GT5, that if you go off the racing line, it's going gonna, it's gonna to say, oh, God, no, you have to restart. It's actually a lot more, there's a lot more bish bash. It's like touring cars, and, and uh, it's quite a good arcade racer. So at the gaming den, we had big projectors, grid two on big screens. We also had the Vasaro race seat, which is a hydraulic race seat, which was absolutely awesome to play. And we had a, we had a time lap on, around the Red Bull ring. So we had a lot of fun there. Did you have a go in the Vasaro? Yes, and I have a license and I obviously showed I didn't have one because I kept messing up so badly. You have a license? I have a driver's license. Oh, okay, right. And a Vissaro license. Well, no, Vissaro license. If I had a Vissaro license, license, license to drive on this Vissaro I wouldn't be here right now if I had that. <laughs> but no, it, it was it was beautiful. It, it Very responsive. You could feel every time you were ready to change gear and it was it was worth every pound, I guess. I'm like, how much is it? No, they start from like 12 grand. Wow. So, yeah. Christmas is soon, so. They are really nice. They're also really expensive. But again, I mean, I enjoy the hands-on that. But I don't play racing games, and if I did, I wanted to be very accessible to you know, fun to pick up, and it was cool. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. We had a bit of a chat with Alan Boyston of v of Team VVV as well. Here's the video. 
Hello, viewers. Well, we'll find out a bit more about the Gaming Den now from the organisers, Debbie and Nick. Guys, thank you for your time today. So tell me, Gaming Den, where did the idea come from? Uh, we just wanted somewhere where people just employ, get, en enjoy playing games. It's that, you can hear it in the background. It's all the games. There's eight consoles in a room together. It's playing games together. It's all that mixing. The stuff you used to get in arcades that you don't tend to see now, they want you to play online on your own. We just like get people together, enjoy, look rubbish together, look amazing together. Just have fun. Dig's Nightcrawler is the new Wonderbook game. You might have heard of Wonderbook from a few months ago. Harry Potter Book of Spells came out a while ago. It's for the PlayStation Move, and it actually, what Wonderbook is, is this thing here. It's a giant AR book. So you turn pages, PlayStation Move, decide, well, it recognizes the symbols, and it puts up things on your screen. Dig's Nightcrawler is a noir detective type thing. Yep. You're basically, you're a bookworm. So you're in book town or whatever. I, don't, I can't even remember what they've called it. But you're a little detective who's whizzing around book town trying to figure out puzzles, and your job as the person playing the game is to help him by manipulating the book, which in turn manipulates the AR world around you. And I don't know if you guys played it? Yeah, I, I saw a bit at Gamescom where we talked to I talked to a few people from the Moonbot Studios, people who were making it, and there was they showed me some quite cool stuff where um, Diggs has to get in the nightclub and the bouncers don't want him to get in. So if you fold the book, you fold the telegraph poles, which so the wire can drop down so he can actually reach the wire to climb in. So it's all kind of interactive, and they built it. They built it for for kids. Um, because the, there's chapters it saves after every chapter, so if you're sitting there playing and your mum goes, oh, tea's ready, then you can actually just close it up and, and go off. And uh, So it's quite, it's a cool little game. Um, so we're looking forward to playing it. Uh, you want to play it now, don't I you? I actually do want to play it. <laughs> it sounds like I've been It's totally wasted on children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds cool. It looks awesome. Yeah, the music, when you actually install it on your PlayStation 3, you just have the icon on the screen. Because you know the PlayStation 3 have all the, the logos and it plays some really nice uh, sort of film noir music in the background and everything. So it's, it's really quite awesome. Cool. And that was our second weekly show. And as you may have noticed, we keep calling it our weekly show because we don't have a name for it. So I've asked suggestions on Twitter. If you guys have any other suggestions as well, let me know. What we've got so far is... Distinctly average. <laughs> Playing the averages. Let me know. Do you like these? I don't know. Mm. Game flap? <laughs> no, God no. Game sandwich? Uh, actually, no, game's gone. No, game, game sandwich is not bad. I, I, I'm, I'm now hungry. <laughs> <laughs> game blab? Or game bladder? No, I don't like uh, The average cast? <laughs> oh, it sounds like a podcast. <laughs> mm. I said distinctly average earlier. A lot of people on Twitter like that. What do you reckon? Distinctly average? That does have a ring to it. Yeah, I think we are very distinctly average. The DNA. <laughs> yes. Uh, we had Gameos or Gameos or something. Like that. How would you say that? Gameos? Gameos? Um, no. Get yeah. back to us on that. Given that I can't pronounce it, it, it no. <laughs> Game Pop? Mm, sounds like there's a bit of music on there. Yeah, yeah a bit of Taylor Swift. Oh. Outstandingly <laughs> average. The average gamer cast, which was my completely uninspired suggestion. <laughs> You're laughing. I'm laughing. sorry. And Game Honk. <laughs> game Honk? Game. <laughs> I mean, they, I guess they all could be used in different types of ways. Same average. So, if you have any better suggestions, please let us know. You can find us on Facebook, we're all on Twitter, comment on the website, and thank you for watching. Subscribe if you like it. See you from LA. Yep, see you in LA. Thanks, bye. See you in London. <laughs> You're not coming to LA. <laughs> I'm sure I can sneak in your suitcase. Oh, yeah, no, suitcase. Yeah. I'll have to hold a fort in London for you guys. No.